Hello YouTube, this is Shad Jackson again and today we're going to do an unboxing of the uh, Gemini GPS S650. Stick with me please. Okay, this is the Gemini GPS S650. Uh, six and a half inch portable Bluetooth speaker. Let's open it up. Of course, you know I'm going to have to pause and do all of that because I'm taping and opening it opening it with one hand so this is what you see speaker is well protected and then it comes in this little uh, plastic sleeve bag here has the manual off to the side with the power cord you know I typically show those I did it in the um, video of the uh, Behringer crossover just lift this out of the box with one hand. So that's it. Just get the speaker and the manual and the power cord. Basic. This is not fancy. Here it is in all of its glory, so to speak. Okay, so I don't know how many of you out there um, have seen uh, videos on these. I've seen a couple. Um, this is like I said, it's Gemini. It has a six and a half inch speaker inside. As I think you can see it, I'm not sure how this is gonna show up. Uh, it has the ripple or quarter inch surround to it. And it has the tweeter up top. Uh, sort of a horn shaped uh, style. Okay, these are the controls. You have your um, inputs. XLR inputs which are around the back that little back corner there that it has that's the way they designed it so these are the input controls uh, for channels 1 and 2 uh, I believe that's line instrument and mic so has a nice solid feel to it the knobs have that little bit of resistance that smooth feel to them so they feel pretty good. Uh, this is the gain knob. One thing I've learned with this speaker, I have played it. Uh, when you're using auxiliary input, cause auxiliary sounds better than Bluetooth. Bluetooth is convenient. It helps that you don't have to worry about the wires. This is the on and off uh, button. Uh, you don't have to worry about the wires, but with uh, the Bluetooth, uh, the sound diminishes a little bit. You don't get as crisp or sharp uh, a signal. Your hit, your uh, trouble, and everything is just sharper, crisper, and brighter with uh, when you use the wired uh, connection, the auxiliary. Uh, let me spin it around. This is what you'll see if you decide to get this uh, speaker. This is what you'll see. Um, and this back compartment right here, this is where the battery is housed. Okay, this is the back of the speaker. And it has a removable battery. It has a Phillips head, uh, Phillips head screw that you can remove. And lay that there. Hope it doesn't roll away. Lower this. And here's your battery. These two tabs here helps you pull it out and you pull it out. And uh, you know, if once it once you use it for so many years or whatever, you know it uh starts getting to the point where it doesn't hold a charge, you can replace it. Order another one. So it connects with these, that little uh, section there. So let me put it back. I just wanted to show it to you guys. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Probably weighs close to one pound. About as heavy as a bottle of water. 16 ounce bottle, bottle of water. Maybe slightly lighter. Screw this screw back in here. This is the handle, has that sort of rubber-like rubber -like feel, place where you can set your uh, tablets or whatever here uh, when you're playing, or uh, at whatever event you're using it, rubber handle. 
so it's um, supposed to be about 13 pounds doesn't feel too bad so this is it and this side doesn't have anything on it but just a regular wall but yeah this is the Gemini GPS S650 I um, realized that turning the gain up was necessary in order to get the max volume with the line input the auxiliary input I thought that the gain only was necessary when you were using the XLR inputs the pro audio inputs and you used a gain for this section but actually even if you're using the um, even if you're using the uh, jacks or the 3.5 millimeter you still need to turn this up in order to hear it I didn't realize that you guys probably knew that already but I didn't so okay so I won't be able to play this speaker um, on this video unfortunately but I hope that uh, me showing you these things uh, will still be good for you guys but this speaker says that it outputs a max output of 120 DB okay and I don't know if you guys have heard about the turtle box speaker the turtle box generation 2 uh, it also claims to put out 120 decibels uh, max okay so I wanted to tell you guys that I have played this speaker this uh, Gemini GPS S650 and it gets pretty loud I've also played the turtle box uh, second generation and it gets pretty loud this is a six by nine this is a six and a half so uh, this the turtle box uh, second generation claims to put out 120 DB max SPL the Gemini GPS s650 also claims to put out 120 decibels max uh, SPL I've played them both uh, together and the results that I've gotten and I used uh, auxiliary input the 3.5 millimeter uh, input and results that I've gotten is that the Gemini GPS S 6.5 I mean 650 actually gets louder than the turtle box generation 2 this is a waterproof speaker this is not Turtle Box, this is a pretty good speaker. It's sturdy, it's solid, it's stiff. Of course, it's plastic, and I did a review on this. Uh, so check that out. Uh, this is stiff as well, but when you're playing it, the Turtle Box 2 uh, with the bass in, I turn the max, I turn the volume up on this Turtle Box 2 max. I turn the volume and the gain up on this Gemini uh, speaker. Uh, both of them max and I turn the bass all the way up on my cell phone's equalizer and the Gemini is bassier it's bassier the bass is louder and boomier and so forth turtle box is more subdued it's not as loud um, when you're turning the volume up with the bass all the way in the speakers volume levels are all the way up and you're controlling the volume from your cell phone the Gemini starts to uh, distort sooner it starts distorting around halfway-ish, somewhere around halfway-ish. You have to, you know, all the bass all the way up, volume all the way up, gain all the way up. Around 50% volume, give or take, it starts max, it starts distorting. And of course, the higher you turn it, the more it, the worse it gets. The Turtle Box 2, you don't notice the distortion around that level. It goes up higher. It starts distorting around maybe 70 75 percent 70 80 percent somewhere in that bracket uh i don't know if it's clipping and you just don't detect it as much but you definitely can detect the distortion uh sooner in this speaker but it's bassier so if you want bass and you don't need a waterproof speaker if you want bass the gemini definitely gives more bass it's a larger speaker box it's a larger speaker box you know it's just bigger than, you know, if you turn that on its side, it's still not as tall as the Gemini. So the Gemini is just a larger speaker. 
it's slightly heavier the Gemini is slightly heavier than the turtle box but they're close to the same weight this is around 10 pounds this is around 13 so it won't be uh, a huge difference in the weight but yeah this one they both say on paper they both say uh, 120 DB max SPL but this is definite and it's not something at least with my test is not something that you have to keep going back and forth and checking let me see is that one a little louder no it's you can easily tell this is louder so maybe this one is just louder than 20 120 db maybe they uh rated it conservatively or something like that but this is definitely louder i just wanted to say that you know since i had them both uh this is louder but no this is waterproof this is not so uh, i just wanted to show you guys that and uh, while I had them, while I had the opportunity to do so, uh, you see the size comparison. Uh, this speaker, um, I gave the measurements and stuff on this one when I did the unboxing. But for the Gemini, if you guys are considering this speaker and you want it to fit somewhere, uh, and you're wondering, will it fit? Uh, there you go. Okay, and one other thing uh, I wanted to show you guys, which may be important to you, I'm not sure if it will be, but the bottom of it, it has, uh, let me turn it over, let me lean it to the side. It has four rubber feet on the bottom, and it also has this where you can uh, set it on top of a sub, connect it to a subwoofer, and you can adjust uh, the tilt of it with this little thing here. So, yep, so that's the bottom. Yep, so this is the bottom of it, and I don't know how important that would be to you guys, but there's that little label there. So let me set this aside. Okay, now this is the manual. You guys know what a power cord looks like. It's three prong, of course. Feels pretty good, pretty sturdy. Okay, here's the manual. And as I've done before, I just go through it, thumb through it, and let you guys see. And anything that you want to say, hmm, that looks interesting, let me uh, pause on this part. Just what you have to do, you have to pause on it. This is what you'll get. Table of contents. Okay, let me move that. And you have this... Um, page of course I can't read what's on there because my face is too far from the book I can't see the print but hopefully you guys can see it the thing that you guys need to see that's particularly interesting to you or necessary, just pause on it. Hope you all don't consider this boring. Because uh, for a lot of people, I imagine it's necessary if you're fixing to spend uh, money on a speaker. You know, you'd like to know what is performance and so forth. Next page. This wind is blowing y'all part in this wind, please. And this. I 
I would sit there and hold the camera still so you guys could read the, read the whole paragraph, but you can pause it. So, I just want to hold it steady enough so you can see it. Okay, and this is the last page in English. So that's the manual. So the Gemini GPS S650 is a pretty good speaker. It's not the most solid speaker in the world. It seems it comes across to me as a little, I mean, it doesn't seem super rugged, but maybe that's me because I haven't really been dealing with pro audio speakers. So maybe this is normal. Uh, maybe most of them feel this way. I don't know if I said this earlier, but when you have the bass all the way up, it's more bassy, as I said earlier, than the Turtle Box uh, second generation speaker. But I noticed that the speaker box does vibrate more on this. The Turtle Box uh, speaker feels more sturdy. It doesn't vibrate as much. Uh, this one is louder but you do get a little bit of vibration and so forth with it. So it's a speaker that is nice and it's, it's decent. It's pretty good. But me personally, I would baby it. I would want to take care of it. I wouldn't throw it around, which I don't think anybody would throw their stuff around. But you know what I mean when you're gigging with it or taking it around or whatever, using it. Uh, I'd handle it, handle it delicately. Uh, this front grill doesn't feel very solid it has a little bit of give in it when you push on it you know it's got a little bit of give to it um, so yeah but other than that it's a pretty good speaker so um, yeah that's the Gemini GPS S650 thank you guys for watching uh, enjoy your music and your sound as always and um, Enjoy your music and your sound as always, and I will see you in the next video.